everybody. Welcome to the Homework Keys podcast. And we are talking about fall harvest, kind of. <laughs> it was <laughs> technically fall harvest, but we hardly got any fall harvest movies. But we got a bunch of movies in the fall, so we're going to talk about them. It's going to be fun. I'm film critic Rachel Wagner, and Bree's here. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I can't believe that as of this filming, we are just days away from Christmas movies on Hallmark Channel. It, they will have already aired by the time this episode airs. Uh, it's it's here. We did it's it. Here. <laughs> it is here, folks. <laughs> kind Holy of. Cow. I mean, I don't know. I mean, at this point, <laughs> we don't really know what's happening, okay? <laughs> We're just creating content with whatever we have. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Somebody will be reporting from the podcast on something, so yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> I mean, I'm happen. pretty sure that we are more organized and have more more of a schedule and planned out <laughs> schedule than the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> so we're doing our best, folks. <laughs> But yes, Fall Harvest. It was the Fall Harvest that was not to be because these were not fall movies except for maybe one. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I was I so disappointed. I mean, I love Countdown to Christmas, but it was mm -hmm. Fall Harvest that really made me like fall in love with Hallmark when yeah. I, you know, just yeah. like discovered it as an adult. And just like living in Texas mm -hmm. where I don't really get the fall, I love seeing it in the films, you know, like being transported just for a couple of hours. And I was so disappointed this year. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was fall harvest by way of summer. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like yes. never have I seen so many beaches in the middle oh of <laughs> the fall in my life. I mean, I get it. Like here, yes, I could walk around in a short sleeve dress too because it's like still 90 degrees. But come on. When I remember 2014, 2015, uh -huh. every single movie had beautiful fall foliage and yeah. there were fall activities. And this year, it just, it really felt like with the exception of one, I mean, I still mm -hmm. have like a couple that I haven't watched yet. But I mean, one of them is literally one summer. So I'm assuming there's not any fall in it. Uh, <laughs> but I just, I'm like, where, where's yeah. the fall harvest, you know? No, it's true. And there's something I think especially hallmarky about the fall harvest, like you were saying, because they, I, I feel like if, if you were going to have a festival, I feel like the fall is very, you know, because there's like pumpkin patches and mm -hmm. fall, uh, you know, uh, the harvest has come. There's, you know, farm stands and, uh, you know, I don't know, just, I just feel like more than other, cause other times of the year, like nobody has a summer festival. Like what, yeah. what is happening? <laughs> but with this, <laughs> I feel like it is the thing people have like festivals and gather and, and corn mazes and stuff like that. And yeah. there have really been some great fall movies, yeah. whether it's Harvest Wedding, Pumpkin Pie Wars, Love of Course was great. I mean, October uh, Kiss is huge. October <laughs> Kiss, yeah, so good. So there really have been some great fall movies. So it's a bit of a bummer. But I think, and yeah. for anyone listening, like hit us up and let us know your thoughts. Mm -hmm. I really feel, Rachel, and I this makes me sad and I hope that I'm wrong, but I feel like it's going to go away, you know? I, I think thinking, so, too. I think I'm thinking like romance novel world, right? August yeah. of this year, we had Christmas romances releasing already. You do not see a lot mm -hmm. of fall depiction in the romance yeah. content world. It's just like September through December is Christmas market. And I just wonder how much, you know, you put all this money into making Countdown to Christmas the thing, right? Like that's where we really shine. Um, and I just feel like fall gets skipped over, but there are, there is an audience that wants to see that. Yeah. And I think that this year we've really seen a deterioration of the seasons, seasonal concept, the abandonment of the seasonal concept from Hallmark. It's like they just decided that everything that was associated with the previous leadership 
had to be kind of dumped because they were, you know, trying to have more diversity, trying to have more, which I think is great. I love that. But that doesn't mean that the things we didn't like about the channel should be abandoned, yeah. like the seasons, because we got rid of Winterfest, started out the year, got rid of Winterfest. And then we had a we had a ice hotel movie in May. What was that? You know, like <laughs> just which was awful. Like, <laughs> And I mean, it was just very random all year long. And, uh, and I, I think that, uh, the attempt to, we'll talk about it more, but having these more emotional movies, uh, I think is admirable, but it's just very difficult to pull off. And I don't think it's really worked. And I, I think that the cozy mysteries and the rom-coms work in this format. And so those shouldn't be abandoned just because we are, we're trying to make some Up changes. Game. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The content itself should not suffer. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't the strongest group of movies, I'll be honest. But um, let's dive in. Let's talk about it. The first one, this was actually technically a Summer Nights movie. Summer Nights Wave 2. Because, yeah, they also got rid of June Brides. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, like I said, they just kind of got rid of all the seasons. <laughs> um, but this one they didn't have in, we didn't get to preview it. So we previewed it with fall harvest. It felt more like a fall movie. It's journey in my heart. Um, this was on the 4th of September, uh, starred Rhiannon, Rhiannon fish and Darian Martin and uh, directed by Lucy guest. And it's a young wildlife biologist travels to a remote Alaskan nesting area of bald eagles, where she receives inspirational guidance from a Native American family and help from a mysterious wilderness guide. Uh, what did you overall think about this one? <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. That's so not a good I'm start. Like, yeah, I'm watching it, right? I'm like 45 <laughs> minutes in. And I'm like, I'm liking this. Yeah. And then there was something about it that felt very familiar. So what did I do? I go to my Hallmark app and I pull it up and I'm looking at reviews and I'm like, that's what's familiar. What that chasing waterfalls movie. Yeah. I was like, is this the same place? <laughs> and then it, after I, I was like, okay, whatever, fine. You know, they probably shoot in locations all the time, like the same locations all the time. I'm not worried about. But then after seeing that, um, that like hidden canyon or or whatever it was called, the story felt kind of like beat for beat the same. I don't know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it had a really strong, I think, beginning, but um, it kind of lost me after that just because it did feel very, very similar to something I had just recently watched a yeah. couple of months ago. What did you think? No, I completely agree as far as the similarities to Chasing Waterfalls. Very, very, very similar. Um, I mean, I I like the whole sort of adventure movie mm-hmm. from Hallmark. I mean, there's yeah. also... um. Oh gosh, now it just left me. The one with Paloha and Joe Wagner. Can't think of the name all of a sudden. Oh yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. Darn. Anyway, they have that adventure movie, and uh, and so I I don't mind the repetition, and I overall enjoyed this. I thought Rhiannon Fish was really good. She is, I think, very likable, and I think she has a lot of potential with these kind of movies. And I think that Darian Martin is very dreamy. Oh, yeah, he's dreamy. Okay, but wait a minute. Okay, she's like a scientist, right? <laughs> For her to be a scientist, I was like, she's kind of ditzy to be a, a little bit, which, yeah. Which, I mean, I'm not saying scientists have to be very stoic and, and boring. And also, my own my other gripe was like, they're doing a lot of hiking and her hair was always perfect. I saw one review where someone was like, your clothes would not look like that. <laughs> <laughs> while you're hiking and I'm like I'm like you I love the outdoors movies I love the adventure movies but let's put a little bit more thought like people are going to catch up they're going to catch they're going to pay attention to stuff like that I was like she literally fell in the water and then in the next scene her hair is perfectly curled <laughs> just was like those little details that kind of yeah pulled me out of it a little bit with the I believability also- laughed that this is supposedly this like remote area that nobody has <laughs> ever gone to before and yet they have perfectly paved trails and picnic tables. 
just saying it's those little details people the little details but i still overall i didn't mind it i didn't (laughs) oh my gosh wait though rachel like the dark moment where like of course you know she has a report to do and of course she take yeah takes the photo and the hero's reaction i was just like it was a lot it was too trying to be dramatic (laughs) and it just did not work I mean, you were really with her, pretty, dude. though. <laughs> I loved that. I mean, it was beautiful to watch. I do agree that I think Chasing Waterfalls is the better film. Yeah. Yeah, is the better film. So, but I'd still, I think I'll give it three crowns. Yeah, three crowns. Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay, then we have Roadhouse Romance. This was on the 11th of September. Lauren Elena and Tyler Hines, director Paul Ziller. And writer Sally Robinson. And this was her first for Hallmark. And it's when Callie returns home, she finds her hometown has changed. Her first love has a new girl and her family's barbecue restaurant has hit hard times. She clashes with a marooned big shot director who might hold the key to saving the restaurant. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I have to say some backstory. So this movie came out the weekend uh, I was covering TIFF on the virtual the Toronto International Film Festival, which means I've been watching like really heady movies, like really artistic movies all day, you know, and so I'd watch like four, maybe even five really abstract, surreal, you know, kind of thing. And you can only watch so many of those movies before you yeah. start to go insane. <laughs> I could maybe do one. <laughs> Even as a film critic. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> and a lot of times they're really depressing and, you know, really like sad about life and death and grief and oh, it's so um a lot. And so I'd watched, I think, three or four of these movies. Long, slow, sad, beautiful, you know, movies. And <laughs> So I was primed for a Hallmark <laughs> Tyler Hines movie. I yeah. was just ready, you know, just relax and enjoy it. And I know this is not a good film, but I still had a fun time watching it because I yeah. was just in the mood Yeah, for it, you know. And I do appreciate the fact that Lauren Elena, first of all, I felt like she did did pretty good for her first time ever. Really I think acting. she did, girl, because we yeah. have had just because someone is a singer <laughs> doesn't mean that they can walk on the Thank screen you. and act. And I think Lauren did yeah. a pretty good job. Yeah. <laughs> she by no means is like winning an Emmy anytime soon, but right. she did a serviceable, commendable job. I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, Tyler's always great, really mm-hmm. good. And I still overall Enjoyed it, like I said, because I was in the mood for a movie. I also appreciate the fact that she's like more of a normal sized person. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. not going to say she's plus size because she's not. But in the world of Hollywood, she's a curvy girl. Kind of she's a curvy girl. Curvy. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate that. Like it, somebody I could relate to a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And I wish mm-hmm. they would do more of that. Yeah. Um, but uh, and I thought they had decent chemistry. I mean, Tyler has chemistry with everybody. Yeah. Um, so those are the positives. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, this is our fall harvest movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was beautiful. It had all the fall yeah. foliage. And <laughs> That's true. You know, I sort of feel like they went so insane on Love, Fall, and Order you know, with fall, mm-hmm. that's like that, that was it. That was like the last fall movie. That we'll like, that's all you guys had, get. Once they had pumpkins on the, the judges stand <laughs> in the trial. <laughs> that was like the ultimate. And then, and then Oh my fall. gosh. But, uh, but uh, yeah, this was, this was our fall harvest movie. And <laughs> the one, the problem with this movie is that, there was no reason for him to have a girlfriend. It just ruined the a lot of the, the romantic scenes because for, he was doing this whole thing for his girlfriend and he was kind of lying to his girlfriend and he was developing this other relationship while he's, you know, going to be making this movie with his girlfriend. And like he could have he could have just been single 
Mm -hmm. And then somebody who's like stuck in his ways and not wanting to get in a relationship, like that would have been fine. Like there's no reason he needed to have a girlfriend for this movie. Like he could have been stranded there for any number of reasons. Right. And yeah, like he just has to stay because there's who cares? Like a hurricane warning. It doesn't matter. Like whatever confluence they have to create to keep them together. That's fine. Like, but having it be that he has a girlfriend that he's making this car for this big romantic gesture that did not work. And it's a, it's a bold move. So we have three movies during fall harvest that had the same, you know, there, you see them in a relationship, the majority of the movie with somebody else. Mm-hmm. And that's so bold. And, and because like in romance, like that's, You know, cheating is a no-go. We don't want to see that. And they didn't necessarily cheat in these movies. But it's like, dang, like 45 minutes, you know, an hour and 45 minutes of the movie, you've been in a relationship with somebody else. So it hurts the romantic moments. I mean, I think it's very difficult to pull off. One that I think did pull it off was Love at First Dance because they never really are in a relationship. Like Mm -hmm. the beginning, the ending of the movie is really the beginning of their relationship. Yeah. Right. And so I feel like that one handled it about as well as that it can be handled. Um, But, um, but in general, it's, it's tricky to pull off. Yes. And I think that uh, in this one, it didn't, it did not work. It just made him seem kind of unlikable and a little bit like a jerk. And it's just because he's Tyler that we don't dislike him. Yeah. More. We forgive it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I, it just makes it, makes it kind of uncomfortable, especially the fact that he's like, it'd be one thing if sometimes they have these relationships where they're still in a relationship, but it's like obvious that this person is a jerk and they just yeah. haven't broke it off yet. Right. Sometimes you'll have that. But in this case, like she wasn't really a jerk. She was a little bit clueless and a little bit, uh, not she was listening. a caricature. Like she yeah. felt very much like let's put him in a relationship with this Hollywood actress and yeah. like, very stereotypical what you would think in ho- a Hollywood actress would be. And I'm like, I would have preferred it if she was actually like super just down to earth, chill and likable. Like that would create so much more of a conflict for me. Mm-hmm. And this one, it didn't. Cause it's like, you know, her goal is to make it big. Like you've given us that stereotypical goal chaser, which is fine. Mm-hmm. But you know, it just, I, I would have preferred her to be like a, just a little bit more regular yeah, girl. <laughs> because it's a little bit like, what is wrong with you that you're in this relationship with this person? Yes. Yes. And you're giving her this huge gift of this car. And I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I liked it. I, <laughs> this is another, sorry guys, another personal nitpicking, but in the beginning, okay. As somebody that was in the military, her military uniform drove me nuts. Mm. Nobody yeah. has their rank and last name on the same patch. One of her flags is like missing on the shoulder. I'm like, if you guys, thank you for that representation, but let's do it right. <laughs> it just like drove me mm-hmm. a little bit nuts. Um, but after that, I, I, I really, you know, I, I really got into it. I think f- because it was like the fall movie. It was beautiful to look at. I loved the scenes with the family. I loved the, oh my gosh, I have to find the barbecue sauce recipe and seeing her in the kitchen. But when, the downfall really, I think, was that he was in a relationship the whole time. Yeah. And, you know, it's just at the end when they get together, it didn't feel like we had had this tension that was building, you know, because he's mm-hmm. with somebody else the whole time. And that tension really just makes that kiss at the end worth it. And I think that that was lacking. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'd give this one 2.5 crowns. Oh my gosh, Rachel. That's lower than Journey of My <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I I think this is worse movie. Like really? fundamentally, I think this movie is worse. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, you, like Journey in My Heart might be a little repetitive, but like it's a competently made movie. Yeah. 
Wow. Okay. I do. That's what I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can have little nitpicks like the trails and the picnic tables, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I think that this is not as well made of a movie. Interesting. I don't know what I want to rate it now. <laughs> what were you, you going to say? Three? I think I was, I was going to say three. <laughs> yeah. Stick with your guns. Stick yeah, with your guns. Because you know what? We did the Instagram poll. Shout out to everybody that commented on our Instagram uh, questions of like, what's your favorite? And in Roadhouse Romance, I knew it was going to be a fave and it definitely was. But there were some others that surprised me too. So mm-hmm. I'll say three for now. You know, I liked it. It had its its issues. I think if you're going to do that storyline of the characters in a relationship with somebody else, you really got to bring it. And I really don't know how you're going to do that in two hours. So <laughs> Yeah, it's it's tricky. Well, next one we had was Raise a Glass to Love with Juan Pablo de Pace, Laura Osnes, and Matthew James Dowden. Mm-hmm. It follows aspiring master sommelier Jenna, who returns to her family vineyard to study and is fascinated by the natural methods of the new winemaker, Marcelo. Yeah. So that, that summary to me makes it sound super boring, I think. <laughs> and uh, a lot of times these, what I call scientific farmer movies, where it's like, we got to create the great, the, you know, the, we got to create the wine or the tulips or the poinsettias or the pears or the, you know, that's usually not for me. Yeah. So I was really surprised when I thoroughly enjoyed this film. Uh, I did too. I, I really liked it. I thought that, I uh, you saw a real character arc for Lozness's character. She starts out so insecure uh and by the end she is able to stand up to the boyfriend and say, "Look, you never really believed in me." and go out on her own and she passes the test and everything. I I just I think that you see a character arc that you don't normally see a growth as, as far as a person separate from the relationship that you don't normally see in these movies. And I liked that. I did too. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is another one where she's literally in a relationship the whole movie with somebody yeah. else. True. <laughs> and, you know, I think you don't really, you get little bits and pieces but you don't get the sense that the restaurant guy is a bad guy really until the end. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, we have, you know, the guy here at the winery at the, at the vineyard that um, is obvious. He's handsome and he's, he, they, their conversation just felt so effortless and, and mm-hmm. so easy to do and you're rooting for him. But in the back of your mind, it's like, she's in a relationship too. So you see her holding back and, um, it was just, I think, a really beautiful movie about taking yourself out of your day to day and having some reflection and 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 getting back to the basics with what your dream is. I mean, she's like in the wild with wine, which is working in that industry is her goal. Um, and then when you go back to reality, I think, you know, having had that reflection, seeing things for what it was. And I think I really liked her having that moment where she's like, you know, what, this isn't working. <laughs> you don't appreciate me, you know, and you as the viewer, we had that moment where we saw, OK, this is why you just hired her. This is why you just gave her that job. And so you're with her when she realizes it like, yeah, I don't I don't need to be in this. So. Yeah, yeah. I uh, that's why I think it works in this case where it doesn't always work is because it, the story was really more about her growth as a human, and she yes. starts out very insecure and not able to pass the test, and and just not very confident, uh, and really able to be kind of manipulated by him, and then and by the end she's able to be a strong uh, woman. So that's why I say that the romance was kind of secondary yeah. in the film. Sometimes Hallmark does have these movies Mm -hmm. that work really well as more women's fiction, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And that's how this one, this one felt. I mean, the romance obviously was like an added bonus, but I could have just watched her journey with this, you know? Yeah. Because I could care less about, are you, are you harvesting natural versus not natural? (laughs) Like, Oh. But, <laughs> but I did like some of their banter between the two of them. I he was very handsome. 
uh, and uh, in this, I think. And it was a beautiful movie. The Vineyard's beautiful. It was well shot. It kind of reminded me of, um, have you ever seen Walk in the Clouds with Keanu Reeves? No. That's so good. He's not, he's kind of a terrible actor in the movie, (laughs) but like, if you can put that aside, it's really good. It's, but he plays this, um, soldier who, uh, agrees to, he, he runs into this woman who is, who is pregnant. Um, the father isn't, uh, in the picture and is, and this is world war two. Uh, and, um, he agrees to pretend to be her husband so that her father doesn't, uh, to try to appease her father. So they go to her house and it's a, this beautiful vineyard and they are, are immediately kind of suspect of, of her. And of course, the longer they put on the charade, the more they actually fall in love. Very good movie. Beautifully shot, gorgeous film. Um, very well acted except for Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yes. He's yeah, I thought Raise a Glass it, to Love. I, I thought it was beautifully it. shot too. Oh my yeah. gosh, the whole even like the San Francisco shots. I'm like, mm-hmm. this is really beautiful. So yeah, it was, and it was fun to talk to the director David Weaver uh, about his his. I was able to interview him, and I loved that interview. I thought it was really interesting to talk to him about the the uh, working with the cinematographer, working with the um, the editor, how they are able to put everything together. So if you haven't listened to that interview you really should it's good i also love matthew james dowd and it's kind of sad that he always gets put in these like mean roles because (laughs) he is so nice he's such a great guy i mean most of the people who work for hallmark are great but he's he's like the guy version what's that actress i'm always talking to you about i'm like she's always the mean girl with the red hair Like, why is she always like the ex girlfriend yeah. or the mean girl or the girl trying to get the guy? Oh, like Fiona Vroom? Yes. Yes. Or and Miranda Fr- Frigone, too. You yeah. know, Aurora Tea Garden and everything. Yeah. The, uh, the, um, the, it, like his interview, I loved my interview with Matthew, Matthew James Dowden. He, you know, that whole ad where it's like, he's the most interesting man. Um, <laughs> That's how I feel about him. Yeah. He's like been like a lawyer and then he was a magician, like traveling all around the world. And now he's like an actor. I mean, he's, he's great. Yeah. So it's too bad that he gets, <laughs> he's so, <laughs> he's, he's handsome. He's charming. Why, why can't he be a lead? I have no idea, but yeah. he's great. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, uh, they had the real life sommelier, uh, on in this and you know you could tell she's not like an actress mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh it it overall it reminded me a little bit of like french kiss which is a movie i love and uh, i just i i maybe part of it is i went into with very low expectations because the poster was just absolutely ab- abhorrent terrible yeah. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the summary sounded really boring uh, but yeah, I'm going to give it a 4.25. Really and I know this it was... is Carrie's favorite. I mean, unless something changed. <laughs> oh, was it? Carrie? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's been her favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorites too. So I'm with Carrie on that one. What yeah. What would you give it? I, I'm going to give it a four. Yeah. 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 I liked it's it. Good. I loved it. All right. So next we have Taking the Reins. And this was on the 25th. It stars Nikki Deloach, Scott Porter, Corbin Burnson, Janine Turner. It's director Claire Niederprum. And uh, a writer discovers what ended her marriage and why she stopped riding horses after going back to her family ranch. So what did you think about this one? You know what? This is a very... I think one of the ones that people are very divided on. Yeah. I love the the marriage in trouble trope. I mean, yeah, and in their case, they've crisis. already divorced. Yeah. Um, I love seeing that. I would like to see more of that because it's very realistic. Yes, we get the kiss at the end in Hallmark movies, but that's only the beginning of the actual work of making a relationship work. I loved this. <laughs> what did you think? Please tell me you didn't hate it, Rachel. No, I didn't hate it. I okay. thought it was okay. I okay. I liked it okay. I I I liked the like hello kissing in this movie. I'm yes. a big fan of that. Yeah, yes. that was good. Um, yeah. it was a little like a movie where we're just walking around and talking a lot. 
Like, a lot of dialogue. Like not yeah. a, it was very exposition heavy. It didn't have a whole lot of plot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like these t- these actors, but I, maybe I wanted a little more plot. But it was okay. I thought it was fine. I thought they did a pretty pretty good chemistry, and um, some of the I thought some of the horse riding scenes were not well filmed. They need no. to talk to the Heartland people yeah. because there was the editing I thought was very bad. It was so obvious when they weren't riding and uh, when it was stunts and um that was distracting. Um but yeah, I mean, they had like three kisses in this scenes in this movie. Yeah, I <laughs> and we'll get to this one, but like this is one of I think what two relationship in trouble you mm-hmm. know films that we got and in this one I liked that we did get a little bit of actually seeing these two put in some work of like fixing their relationship mm-hmm. and I don't don't think that it was like set out to intentionally fix the relationship but like we have to work together so yeah. there's that forced proximity they're spending more time together that just opens up time to have dialogue and conversation and it it was really nice to see that whereas in another movie i don't think that we got that yeah, we're gonna <laughs> talk about that next um uh. <laughs> but yeah the horse riding stuff it was nice to see her get back on i wish that i mean this is queen nikki freaking deloach i would have liked to see those scenes filmed a little bit better because it's it's her yeah. um but yeah i thought it was i loved it for that representation of like marriage in trouble or, you know, that second chance between a married mm-hmm. couple. I thought those scenes and those moments, uh, they really, they really worked for me. The dad yeah. was tripping in the beginning. I was like, dude, what's your problem? Yeah. Like, <laughs> give her a weird. break. Yeah. I, I say, welcome to Hallmark, Scott Porter. Please make more movies. I love Scott Porter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And I think this could be a good match. They had a lot of, they were good together. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give it a 3.5. Yeah, I'd give this one like, I think I'd give this one like a 3.75. It was my favorite at first. Mm -hmm. And then I kept watching. So. (laughs) Okay, good. (laughs) Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. All right. So then we have Love Strikes Twice. This was on the 2nd of October. It's Katie Finlay and Wyatt Nash. Director Jeff Beasley. Writer CJ Cox. And uh, it's Maggie and Josh are an out-of-sync married couple. Maggie wishes for a do-over and wakes up 15 years earlier. Will she choose Josh again or is an ex-boyfriend her happily ever after? So I like the whimsy of this. I like the fact that, you know, it's in kind of alternate dimension and it's trying something new. Uh, I also like Katie Finley. I thought she was, was, was cute. I enjoyed her. Um, but yeah, I, the story of this, like the fact that, that, that the whole movie was just to save the library movie when I felt like they could have done (laughs) so many more interesting things that would have been. I don't know, like just anything is more interesting than like, can we save the library? Like they they didn't use the time 
uh, to fix the relationship. Yeah, to fix the relationship <laughs> or do anything interesting. I just felt like it, that was a mistake to me. I there was this show on VH1 that I loved and adored called Hindsight, where mm-hmm. the character wakes up when she is back in the 90s and about to get married to her first husband. And so now she has to, she's faced with all the decisions that she had made. And is she going to make them again? Uh, and knowing how things turned out. Like, that's an interesting concept. That's an interesting idea. And like on surface, it seems like that's the idea of this. But instead, it's a let's go back and save, save the, library the library. Because him not being able to have saved the library, he feels like she got with him out of pity because he wasn't able to save the library. <laughs> I mean, that is just such a reach, you know? Yeah. Like, I just feel like there's so many more interesting like, even if that's the case, I feel like if that's the catalyst for their relationship is how they kind of got together, fine. And you could you could have that be an element. But to spend, like, the whole movie on the, the entire film, Rachel. On, <laughs> yeah, on the, like, m- the various, you know, meetings and speeches and, and stuff like that. Courtroom scenes. Yeah, courtroom <laughs> scenes. That... <sighs> It, it just would have been so much more interesting if, like, it had really dealt with, I think it was him losing his mother, I want to say, is the reason why he wanted to keep the library. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I don't know, there's just a million things. Like, for instance, with the show Hindsight, like, there are so many decisions. Uh, she had become ostracized from her friend, and so she's now all of a sudden good friends with her again. And she realizes, oh, I, I mean, I missed how much she missed being friends with her friend. And things like that, that obviously you can do way more in a show than you can in a movie, but there were just, there, there could have been so many more things that she is confronted with people that have passed away, things that have, have been lost that she, you know, that she misses or, you know, just something interesting instead of we're going to save the library and, and then spending all this time with this ex-boyfriend, which I just felt like went nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. And All then of a sudden you it was, wake up and yeah. your relationship is perfect. And it's like, we didn't act, aside from you saving the library and y'all yeah. spending all this time together in the past, you know, saving the library. Now it just feels like so much of your relationship was based off of the library being saved. And we didn't actually see yeah. any of the work, you know, but I guess it is kind of like, the fantasy, like you got to go back into the past and fix something and then you wake up and everything's perfect. And it's like, that doesn't, that's not how this works. <laughs> well, it kind of reminded me of on the Simpsons somewhere where they, they, they go into all these different altered dimensions and then they come back and the only difference is that everybody has lizard tongues. Yeah. <laughs> like close enough. <laughs> I mean, I know again that we we love the romance here on Hallmark, but if it was just like a women's fiction sh- movie about her saving the library, that would have yeah. been fine. I mean, libraries do a lot for communities, so you know, I'm not. There's well, no shade it, on that, but it, it also just, felt a little hollow when they specifically said that there was a whole another library that had been built. Yes, so it was just this building. <laughs> no, and, but this is and, what got me. And then me they Rachel. ended up using the building for her <laughs> office space. I mean, yes. what? <laughs> This is what got me. So she's in the courtroom, like, just bringing it, like, this yeah. total admirable. And how they swung that, I mean, what world does, like, somebody that doesn't actually practice law, like, get to just walk into the courtroom and do this? I don't yeah. know. Maybe it happens. But then she's, like, at these scenes with the, like, ex-boyfriend and his dad. And she's just, like, taking this, like, beating from him. And I'm yeah. like, girl, get up and walk away. Like, yeah. do have to take this well and i mean i thought the best part of the movie was really her relationship with her brother yeah i mean if you think like obviously anytime you're dealing with time travel this is a problem but if you think about it now she's in a supposedly perfect spot in her relationship when she comes back that she has had no part in she would have like no memories of anything that had happened she would have no memories of how they actually got together in this alternate dimension, right? Yes. <laughs> she would have no memories of anything. Like, I mean, she's got to like get in the TARDIS and have like erase her memory because yeah, I think that- I, I was thinking I had so many questions after I'm like, 
how does, does she know where they live? Cause they don't even yeah. live in that town at the beginning right. of the movie. They live in like Chicago or something. <laughs> like, hey, I'll just follow you home, you know? <laughs> Because yeah, I don't know and where I'm going. <laughs> get it. Of course, you have to take the leap of faith when you're dealing with time travel. But it, I guess when those, you can tell the movie hasn't been that satisfying when you're bothered by those kinds of questions of like, yeah. you know, like when I'm watching Kate and Leopold, I'm not thinking like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen now that she's back in the 18, you know, in the 1800s. I don't care about that. Like, because I'm involved in <laughs> relationships. Yes. I mean, uh, if, if you typically see a time travel, like a, a novel, I mean, think mm-hmm. of Outlander and how big those books are, <laughs> you know, like you're not going to do that in two right. hours. Like, I think it would have worked better probably if she had come back to her same reality, but now she understands her husband more. Yes, that's what I wanted. Instead that's of it being wanted. back to the future part two, you know, all of a yeah. sudden. Everything's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I felt really cheated. I mean, I was like into the movie. I was really in it. And then the ending happens and I'm like, "You, this is a marriage in trouble movie. And yet yeah. she gets a clean slate because she went back to the past, helped fix something that he wanted. You don't actually see any of the work to fix the relationship. Yeah. And they have no chemistry, her and White Nash. None. None. She probably had more chemistry with the ex-boyfriend. The ex-boyfriend, and we didn't like him either. No. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, I don't think this one really worked. I appreciate they tried something different. Mm -hmm. Um, And I did like Katie Finley. She was cute. Um, But uh, This is another one. No fall. No fall. No fall. At all. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) What would you give it? One to five. This is a 2.75. I agree. That's actually what I was going to say as well. I do think it's a better made movie than Roadhouse Romance. Um, but if I was going to pick, I probably would pick to rewatch Roadhouse Romance just because it's like, I don't know. It's just more relaxing. <laughs> yeah. This is one of those ones I don't need to watch again. Yeah. So next we have South Beach Love. And this is on the 9th. This stars Taylor Cole and William Levy based on the Hallmark publishing novel by Caridad Pinero, which we covered on mm-hmm. our uh, uh, romance reading wrap up for June, I think. Yeah. Summer and the summary is follows a story about rival quinceañeras, glorious Cuban cooking, friendship, family, and romance. So you haven't had a chance to watch this one, correct? I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I think overall this was a pretty fun movie. Okay. Uh, it, I do think that the book is better. Uh, the book is does such a better job of like building up the romantic tension between the two. And she does a really good job of kind of giving them like little moments of touch and feel that. Yeah. Like within the G rated, you know, <laughs> uh, that was something you really loved about the book. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. So that by the end, you're really excited when they get together because you've just been building the, in, in the, uh, uh, the chemistry. Um, uh, and that was missing in this movie. Um, I think that all the stuff pretty much with the families was good and uh, worked well. And the cooking scenes and the, the, everything with the two girls was very sweet and uh and i think worked well and i liked those two although they looked a little old in the casting to be uh quinceañeras um but they were they were good i liked everything with the families i liked so that was good but i thought that even though william levy is very handsome very no question <laughs> um i thought that he was a little wooden in his acting and a little stiff which oh, made no the chemistry a little tricky you know when you don't have that kind of that kind of ease on a camera um it feels like it's been a while since i've seen him in something is that right am i i don't think i have seen him in anything before okay um but i don't know i just felt like he was stiff and kind of just i wanted him to like loosen up you know (laughs) yeah um I and, haven't watched it intentionally yet, just because I was like, this is, I know this isn't a fall movie. We read the book. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's not a fall movie. That's so. true. And the chemistry just wasn't quite there for me. I mean, I, I, 
I like Taylor Cole. I think she's she's good. She was definitely the better actress of the two. Uh, but um, you know, it just hurts if you don't have that chemistry. It's tough, uh, but it's not like a terrible movie. I thought it was okay, I guess I'd say. Um, I think I would give this one, I would give, I think I would still give it three. Um, just because. You in this roadhouse romance, Rachel, like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a question. I, mean, I do you. think it's a better movie than roadhouse romance. Yeah. No question. Do you think, because, okay, I love Taylor Cole too. I do think she's kind of a tough actress, though. Like, if you're not a strong male lead, I can see it coming across as though there's no chemistry. I don't, I don't know how if I'm mm-hmm. like explaining, but she's just. I love her, but I can see how if you're not like a strong actor in your own right, how yeah. it it's going to come across on screen like there's no chemistry. Mm-hmm. She's. I don't know. She's she's kind of she's maybe kind of a two point seven two point seven five because I mean I I I I think that the like I I think that the relationship in a journey to my heart is better. The chemistry is better, um, but the story obviously I like better in. Uh, in South Beach love. Cause I mean, it's based on the book that I like. Um, I don't know. It's tough. <laughs> it's 7. also 5, super I fast. I mean, we just talked about the book. I know. A it was very fast. Ago. <laughs> yeah. And I just kind of wish that, uh, it had gotten some of the spirit of the Baker and the beauty, which was such a great show. And the lead relationship of that show was a, uh, a was a, a famous um uh super star supermodel whatever i forget the actress's name i think it's tori something anyway and then and then the lead guy was uh works for the bakery uh of his family bakery and two of them meeting beauty and the baker um and they have such chemistry so great and i just wish that it, it had been more like that and and I think that's what more I envisioned or like Vanessa and Mateo um, on Beauty and the Baker. Oh, so great. And I, I guess I just pictured something more like that because there's a lot of cooking scenes in Beauty and the Baker. And I just wish it had been like a little bit more. I like the chemistry, you know, filling it more. But um, I did like everything with the girls. The girls, the, they, they were very, very cute, very sweet. So. I liked that. And I love a cooking scene. I think cooking mm-hmm. scenes can be so intimate. And if that chemistry oh. is there, oh my God. Everyone <laughs> who listens to this podcast knows I love like the reach over, like kneading the dough or like whatever it might be. <laughs> oh. Yes. Have you ever Swoon. seen? <laughs> I think it's recipe to recipe of love. Have you ever seen that one? I feel With like Daniel I have. Panabaker. Yes. Oh. Yes. That yes. one's my favorite it's so good I, yes recipe for love yeah that one is so good i mean that's why i mean even in the in the christmas movies i mean the making the cookies and i just yeah. love those scenes yes i joke that the um the kneading the dough scene in recipe for love is the uh the hallmark equivalent of the uh, pottery scene in a <laughs> ghost, ghost? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yes, I love it. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I think that's accurate. <laughs> that is such a classic scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. We got to cover With, that on the podcast one of these I know. Days. With Unchained Melody playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Advice to Love By. It's on this 16th, Aaron Westbrook and Brooks Darnell. It follows a love advice author and a dating columnist who feel attracted to each other and both use strategies from their own playbooks to win over the other. Now, I tweeted out when I watched this movie that I think I said, I think uh, Brooke Starnell took hot pills for making this movie because he He was was so just smoldering (laughs) in this movie. And he was the romantic in the movie. Yeah. (laughs) What is more to ask for? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like the fact that she could keep focused on her article, like she, she 
I guess she's good at her job because I yes. think I would be distracted by this yes. incredibly handsome man taking me out on dates and stuff like that. <laughs> Bringing flowers, oh my you gosh. know. <laughs> and I feel like this movie had potential to be super boring because it's a lot of office talk and a lot of business, which usually is like, uh. Um, but for whatever reason, it worked for me. I thought that they uh, had such good chemistry and I liked that they were both like competent and capable and there wasn't like a, how dare you, you know, kind of like moment like you sometimes get, like, I don't know. I just, I, I just thought the script did a very good job and I liked both of these actors and he was so handsome that that went a long way. <laughs> Yeah, from the previews, I was nervous. I'm like, okay, we're getting a romance in Fall Harvest with two people of color in the starring roles. And I'm like, and it kind of looks like it's going to be boring. It looks a little yeah. disappointing. And I mean, I was on the Facebook groups of, you know, people like, oh, I'm not interested in this. And I'm like, oh, well, I have to show up for it. And I'm so happy. It was just I think it was wonderfully written. Yeah. Um, this is a script. Yeah, the script was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the side characters bought the humor. I loved Larry as uh Brooks's <laughs> Brooks Tarnell's friend. I yeah. like shout out to Larry. <laughs> um the whole relationship with her editor, uh Ella and Grant at the bookstore owner. It just mm -hmm. it just I don't it know. Good. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just shows like any tropes can be good. You just have to have the good that comes down to the script and the chemistry. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm going to give this one 4.25. Yeah. I think I'm going to do it. Four, four and a half. 4.5. Yeah, it was really good. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can get through these dramas a little faster. Uh, <laughs> we, have, <laughs> we have Redemption in Cherry Springs. This was on the 12th of September. This was the only mystery that we really had, unless you can't sign sealed delivered as a mystery. Uh, the, the rest were all uh, movies, you know, mm -hmm. movies and mysteries. These, the rest were all movies. Uh, and this stars Rochelle Eitz and Keith Robinson and Frankie Faison. After fallout from a story, reporter Melanie goes home to Cherry Springs for a break. When a friend disappears, she uses her skills to get to the truth, to the local detective's dismay. Uh, so this one I thought was fine. I, I don't really honestly even remember it that well. <laughs> but I thought, you know, I thought for a mystery it was entertaining. And, and uh, I think I re recall being fairly obvious who the um yes who the, yeah. the yeah. murderer was um, you figure that out pretty i don't even know how i figured it out yeah. i was just like they're not looking at somebody yeah. and it's pretty obvious that this person needs to be looked at yeah right but i i liked the two of them kind of with like why are you still bothering me <laughs> like why are you leave yeah. me alone was kind of fun um, I mean, she's a reporter, so it's not that big of a stretch for her to be investigating. Um, unlike a morning show chef, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I thought this one, I mean, I'd be interested in seeing more, um, but it was just fine. It was okay. Yeah. yeah I think the me. first ones in the mysteries are just so hard to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like we'll get more just for the simple fact, like I think of Martha's Vineyard Mysteries, which I love. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the hero, the, the, the guy in that show had something happen to him back in Boston. So he has mm -hmm. like his own mystery going on. And so with her, with, you know, whatever happened back wherever she was before she came to Cherry Springs, you can kind of get the sense like they're going to bring it back, keep having more dead people show up in this small town and also investigate yeah. whatever it is that she had going on. So we'll see. I think yeah. the second one, let, let's just hope it's better. This one wasn't really that memorable. I got it. I, I very, I agree. I kind of wish though that it wouldn't, they wouldn't do any more so that, cause I loved Rochelle so much last year in, um, Christmas Tree Girls in Colorado. That movie was way better than I expected it to be. And she was so good. But I'm like, no, don't be in the mystery. Be in the rom-coms. <laughs> yeah, when she fell on the ice. <laughs> oh, so good. And that kiss. Oh, yeah. The best. <laughs> um, but I'll give this a three. Yeah, I think it's like a three. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Then we had Finding Love in Mountain View. And I can't remember what I gave it in our mini review. Um, but we did it. Me and Cammy did like a little mini review. We we're just trying something different because we got an early screener of it. Um, and this is Danielle uh, C. Ryan and Miko uh, Olivier. And uh, directed by Sandra L. Martin and uh, D.F.W. Buckingham. And this is after learning that she's been entrusted to take care of her deceased cousin's children. An architect is torn between focusing on her career and honoring her cousin's wish. And I actually, I really liked this. I liked the chemistry between Miko and Danielle. Um, I mean, it's kind of a ridiculous situation that somebody would leave their children to somebody and not give them no notice at all. Seems kind of crazy, but whatever, you know, you accept that as the premise and you enjoy, you'll enjoy the movie and the, the supporting cast was, was strong and I liked the music in the movie. I liked the cinematography. I mean, it's just overall, I enjoyed it. It, it was, it was, it was good. I liked yeah. it. So I have that one saved too. Cause I, it just knowing the premise, I was like, this reminds me of that Lacey movie. Yeah. Was it Sweet Caroline. I'm like, mm-hmm. I really love that one but I'm not ready for another one of those types of movies quite yet. So (laughs) I mean, I would say this is better than that movie just because I thought that the choices they made for, for her father in that movie were really strange. The way he was like kind of resentful of her. (laughs) Weird. (laughs) I was like, you should be supporting your daughter during this very difficult time. I don't know. That was strange. And uh, and I mean, there were some great parts between her and Tyler in that movie. I, the proposal scene was hilarious. I loved it. So I enjoyed that movie, but, um, but this one, I think that the relationship builds a little bit more, uh, slowly and, uh, she definitely has more challenges with the kids, I think in this one. Oh gosh. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> Lacey went through it with her yeah. nephew in that one. <laughs> they like run away at a point in this and they have to like go and find them. Oh my them. gosh. <laughs> I don't know. I liked it. I uh-huh. I felt like uh, you could tell, obviously this is an acquisition, but maybe there's like a little bit more money in this than some of the other Hallmark films. Uh, because I think they were actually intending to like actually release this and then. Okay. Um, then it got purchased. Uh, but, but anyway, I I can't remember, like I said, what I gave it before, but I'm going to give this a four. I thought it was good for what it is. No. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. Okay, then we have One Summer, and this is on the 26th. Sam Page, Sarah Drew, Amanda Scholl, director Rich Newey, and writer Maria Nation, and Michael Rice. Jack takes his son and daughter to his late wife's beachside hometown, hoping to heal and become closer. The summer brings visions of the past that could forge a new path forward. Uh, so this is based on the book by David Baldacci, who also did The Christmas Train. I don't know if you saw that. but Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this one is pretty good. I liked it. Uh, it's definitely more of a tearjerker. Um I think that it felt a little rushed and that's a problem with these emotional stories is that it's just really hard to do them justice in, you know, the 86 minutes that you have, uh, in these TV movies, it did feel a little bit rushed. Uh, and you did feel a little bit shortchanged in the romance department between Sarah Drew and Sam Page. Uh, they just didn't have very much time together because they have to have all these scenes with him and his, his ghost wife and they have so many scenes with him and his kids and the kids. And 
Um, the kids, the daughter was a lot. She was very, very much a lot in this movie. Um, <laughs> I'm yeah, like, I can't, I can't do like the oh the snobby. Yeah. I'm going through the angst of being there, a teenager. That's why I was like, yeah, we'll save this one too for but, when I'm in the mood because they're I, at this like gorgeous beach house, and she's like, I don't want to be here. Why don't we go back to Ohio? I'm like, what? <laughs> As somebody who grew up in the Midwest, I'm just saying, if you can spend time at the beach, we'll yeah. take it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, I, I've lived in Indiana in my life. There's nothing wrong with that. But if I get the chance to be a beachside house for a summer, I'm taking it. <laughs> right. What else are you going to do? I mean. Yeah. But <laughs> this definitely had a lot of talent as far as the acting. It mm-hmm. was very... You know, very well cast. Sam Page, Sarah Drew, Manishul. It felt a little bit like a pilot of a show. Okay. Um, And I would be interested in that show uh, because interesting characters. Uh, I don't know how you could continue to have Ghost Wife, but whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Kind of how it felt. (laughs) Uh, So I'm going to give it a mm, 3.75. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then, and you hadn't seen it, correct? No, I haven't. I haven't watched one summer yet. No, I was like, oh, single dad, <laughs> dead wife, teenager. I got to be in the right mood for this one. <laughs> Not in the mood for tragic right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then we have Rise and Shine, Benedict Stone. This is on the 3rd of October. Tom Everett Scott, Mia Maestro and Ella Ballantine, director Peter Benson, writer Phaedra Patrick. And we also it's based on a novel. Mm-hmm. Uh, had you read that novel? I hadn't read it. I was like, oh, I guess I need to get this book. Because <laughs> <laughs> so it's Benedict Stone's life is turned upside down when his teenage niece arrives on his doorstep, except she might be the change that Benedict desperately needs. Yeah. So what did you think of this one? I liked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it wasn't like great but it it wasn't horrible um the niece shows up in the middle of the night and it's pouring rain and I think she was what he needed you know Mm -hmm. she just kind of bought him out of his shell and I I don't know I liked that dynamic and he did need that Mm -hmm. fun and that spark and yeah I don't know what did you think I thought it was it was fine it did feel rushed once again to Mm -hmm. me Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Tom Ever Scott's good actor. I thought everybody had pretty good chemistry. I thought it was well made. I just wish that we'd had a little more time with all of our characters. And and so, you know, that's just the tough thing about doing these. Uh, yeah, because I'll be dramas. honest, Rachel, I thought, I was like, oh, is this going to be a new show? Yeah, it felt <laughs> The again. way that they were like previewing it, I'm like, yeah. oh, we're getting a new drama show. It did. It felt like a pilot of a show. Uh, and... Um. Yeah, the the relationship between the two brothers. Probably my my favorite thing, though, probably was the relationship between him and his wife, and how mm-hmm. that how he learned to be more thoughtful, like Romeo, <laughs> yeah, thoughtful and kind, yeah, to her. So I appreciated that. Um. So I'd probably give this one. Um, I'm gonna give it a three yeah i think mine i'll I'll do like a Mm 3.2 okay then we have the vows we keep this on the 10th this stars fiona gobelman and antonio kayon and linda thorson an event planner must organize the perfect wedding for her sister in less than a month when she finds out that the rosewood historical inn and and beloved wedding venue is being sold so there were a few things I actually liked about this movie. I liked that we got the story of the two sets of sisters. Yeah. You know, and yeah. the relation between the older sisters who own the the um uh inn, I guess. Um, and then we have her we have Fiona and her sister who she's planning the wedding for. Uh, I liked that and I, I think that they that, that was refreshing to see like these two different relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course I love Antonio so much, but I just felt like he was that the relationship, the romance was kind of not really even taken care of by the script very well. Like 
it was hardly even there. So I just felt like I wish for, I wish he could get like a real leading role where he's yeah. like, like I wish he could have his Brooks Darnell moment where I'm like, he took hot pills. Like this is like great. I want him to have that kind of moment. And so far, both of the leading roles that he's gotten in homework movies, they've been both more kind of on the dramatic side and both been ensembles. So I would really like for him to get his leading man. I think he's, he, he can do it. I know he can, and he's great. Um, but yeah, I would say that the Fiona and, you know, relationship part of Antonio relationship part of things was the weakest element of the movie, unfortunately. Yeah. It's just when you have so many things going on that you're trying to do in two hours, the romance really, it takes a back seat, you know, it's like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. The kiss at the end is like, great, but actually believing that these two people would get together and stay together. I don't, I didn't walk away from this film feeling that. And like, I am a huge Antonio fan Last year's Evergreen movie, even though it was not about Hannah and Elliot, they totally stole the show for me. I cried multiple times because of them. And like you said, I want him to have a role where he can shine and really show what he can do. And I mean, Mm -hmm. he did what he can do in this movie, but like knowing that it's a romance, I mean, it felt very much more women's fiction-ish. It's it's focused on the two... The, the two estranged sisters. And then I don't know, Rachel, it's just me. Listeners, don't burn me at the stake for this. But when it comes to these wedding plot lines, yeah. I prefer more of the like wedding every day type of stories rather or wedding every weekend rather than like, oh, it's my sister's wedding and I want to make things perfect for her. Like, I'm just kind of tired of seeing that. It was a little annoying for yeah. me. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it is not my favorite plot. Like going to all the different wedding planning stuff and and you know like squabbling over what to have and i don't know yeah and the sister at the end is like i couldn't have done this without you and i was like you didn't do anything (laughs) she did everything (laughs) yeah (laughs) like literally it was like she was planning her own wedding yes yeah (laughs) um yeah what would you give this one it gets a four because of Antonio. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I do love Antonio. I I'm gonna give it a 3.5. Because okay. I did like the two sister stories and I love Antonio. Yeah. So I'll give it 3.5. Yeah. It was a little boring though. <laughs> I'm totally it honest. was, girl. It, and and I'm like, again, <laughs> don't burn me at the stake. But like I was happy that we spent so much time outside because when they would occasionally like span the camera to show the end. I was like, this place is awful looking. <laughs> like it looks not cozy at all. Like it does on the inside. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I mean, I liked the various gardens and stuff. Yeah. But, the outside yeah. was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, all right. Then we have last the signs will deliver the vows we make. And this was on the 17th. Mm-hmm. Of course, our whole group of postables, Eric Mabius, Kristen Booth, Crystal Lowe, Jeff Gustafsson. And it's as Shane and Oliver prepare for their wedding. They must pause to help a young boy fighting leukemia reunite with his long lost friend. Their search is complicated by Shane's mother who arrives with her own plan for their wedding. Meanwhile, Rita and Norman navigate the challenges of trying to start a family, but a new employee in the dead letter office may deliver the answer. So if you want full coverage of this movie, check out our friends over at deliver me a podcast. Uh, I'll put a link to their, uh, their podcast uh, and that's Casey and Jess and Cammie. And they are, they are, I mean, they're talking ad nauseum about this, every detail, everything you could want. They're going to do two full, like two, an hour and a half long. <laughs> a it's recap. their baby. So, yes. <laughs> but I'll just say, I don't want to spoil it too much for when Brie ends up watching the whole series and watches this. Uh, but overall, I loved it. I mean, I, I, I especially, I think that Eric Mabius is the real star. He does such a wonderful job of portraying vulnerable characters who, uh, who have lots of, uh, 
who are kind of shy and maybe even a little repressed in their emotions and their feelings. He is so good at that, whether it's Daniel and, and Ugly Betty, Howard and How to Fall in Love, which is very like wounded character. And then as Oliver, he's somebody who seems so like put together and so like starched and, you know, always wearing the suit and, and the spouting, you know, historical facts and he's just a very seems to be very buttoned up kind of person but he's also like really wounded and uh and before he's getting to get married in this movie uh he is really struggling with like trust and whether he can really go through with this and like be vulnerable again um, and that was so moving. I bawled my eyes out. It was so good. He did a great job. Uh, and her, him and Kristen Booth in those scenes were excellent. Have su- they have such great chemistry. I just, but he was the real star for me in this movie. And uh, every, the things with the wedding really, I think, were beautiful and, and worked. And the whole ca- there's a whole case that they're following with this letter that this woman writes to this firefighter and they kind of follow it each step of the way. And that worked great. Uh, The only part that I'm not as completely sold on is the solution that they come up with for Rita and Norman having children. Mm -hmm. Um, You think that they're going to adopt, but it turns out they're just going to kind of welcome this woman into their home and help her to raise her baby, which is like admirable. And I'm sure that maybe happens sometimes, but they had literally only known her like two weeks. So I kind of felt like, "Mm, I don't know if that's really a very realistic solution, you know, that like, because they're like, we're not going to adopt you. We're going to, your baby, we're going to adopt you and let you care for your baby. And I don't know. I didn't, I don't know if I completely buy that. Um, yes. and, <laughs> I don't know. If I mean, they're so that. sweet <laughs> yeah. and it's fine. But, uh, and if this is the, the, the way that it was structured at the end, it really felt like this was kind of the, the parting uh, movie for the postables. Uh, we'll see. But, that's a nice place to kind of end everybody. Uh, and it's it. So I'm happy that we got the movie. I'm happy that we got Shane and Oliver's wedding. Um, but for me, the real star was, was Eric maybe as Oliver. I thought that his scenes were so good and he did a great job. Um, so, you know, it's a great series. I mean, I'm going to give it a, uh, uh, it's not my favorite of Science Hill Delivered movies, um, so it's not going to get a perfect score for me, but I'm going to give it a like a 4.9. It was, okay. It was very good. So, so did it start out as the show and then they just occasionally made movies? Yeah, so they had a versa. season of the show. I think I forget how many episodes. Uh, they had a season of the show and then they went off to make movies. So there's 12 movies. And 10 episodes of the show. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, I still think that the best of all of any... I, honestly, I think probably the best thing that Hallmark has ever made is The Sign Seal Delivered for Christmas. It is so good. I I mean, maybe people think I overhype it, but I just absolutely love the story uh, about Faith and, uh, and Shane struggling with her... Um, with her faith and her, uh, them putting on this pageant for this little, little, um, this child and her bringing back all these memories and the same thing for Oliver. And, um, it's so good. Uh, I, I just, I, I think that, that one thing this show does is it very subtly, uh, brings up themes of faith but in a way that feels authentic to the characters and does not feel pushy. And uh, in this new movie, at the end, they have in their wedding vows, they are reciting from the book of Ruth that wherever you go, I will go. Your God will be my God. And and for Shane to say that when she has struggled so much with her faith, uh, say, to say that to Oliver was very moving and beautiful. Uh, and I, I just think not... Every writer can handle themes of faith that delicately and that beautifully. 
In fact, it's very rare that it's not just feel, it doesn't feel like a sledgehammer to, you know, the like, yeah. <laughs> um, and so Martha Williamson, the writer of Science Hill Delivered, she manages to, particularly with Oliver, make that such a part of his character. And he talks about, um, they had a, uh, he talks about how the, the, her mother asks him, how did you get through it? How did you get through your wife leaving you? How did you get through your mother leaving you? And I, uh, and he says, well, I had my faith. And she says, well, the f- faith doesn't hug back and faith can only get you so far. And I was like, that is such a true statement. You know, mm-hmm. like we all want, we all want faith to carry us through and it does in many ways, but it can only do so much of the heavy lifting and then we need family, friends, other things to help us get through. And and like you rarely see writing that's that emotionally honest about faith, you know, that they want it to be this, like, I always say that there's these movies where faith is your faith is where Jesus is magic you yeah, know, and like solves mm, everything. Yes. And, like makes everything. and those just don't ring true for me. Uh, and but this does, and she's just a she's a good, very good writer. And like I said, Oliver and Eric Mabius's performance with Oliver make it feel so authentic. And like I said, when they are reciting Ruth in their vows, that was so moving. And uh, so, like aside from the the sort of the Norman and Rita story, didn't really work for me that well it was it was it was okay i guess but it didn't feel that realistic to me um but um other than that i you know i really really liked it it's great and did um, she also write touched by an angel yes. okay i remember that show being huge when i was mm-hmm. a kid yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I haven't watched too much of it but the other day it was on and I was watching homework drama and it, the, it started an episode and I was like, holy cow, there were like muggings and it was pretty vibe. Like, wow, yeah. this show. Um, and, and really with science still delivered, it goes to some dark places that Hallmark never goes other in other shows. Like there's, um, there's a, a character that gets raped at one point. Um, there's a, not one of our main characters, obviously, but in the, in one of the cases that they're one of the letters that they're, you know, pursuing. Um, so anyway, it goes some, to some darker places like, and like with Oliver, um, his mother leaving him, his, his wife leaving him, you know, there's yeah. some trauma there. So anyway, that's a lot of uh, science Hill delivered, but it's <laughs> great. I know that everybody listening to the show loves science Hill delivered. Um, and I think as far as like, oh, I don't watch that much TV. Neither do I. I really don't. But uh, it's only 10 episodes and then the movies. Okay. And I I just, I think that it's a good binge, a worthwhile binge. And uh, and just, it's it's honestly the best thing Hallmark's ever made. I, I, I say that with full confidence. This show uh, is the best thing they've ever made. Well, thanks for breaking it down because I haven't watched it yet because I had the like the good witch feeling of like, oh, there's probably like seven seasons I have to yeah. catch up on. <laughs> like good witch is fun. I enjoy it. Uh, but I think that it's not as good as Science Seal Delivered. Science Seal Delivered mm-hmm. is the best thing the Hallmark's ever made. Okay. Which it is. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, let us know what you think of science sale delivered of these other fall harvest films quote unquote fall harvest yes quote unquote fall harvest <laughs> let us know the september movies you enjoy yes september and october <laughs> uh, we would love to hear in the comments section your scores and uh thanks so much brie for doing this really appreciate it and we'll be excited to at the end of the month we'll have our reading wrap up and and uh what how can people follow you on social media you guys can follow me on Instagram. I'm at Falling for Romance. And in my bio, I have a link tree with all the other places you can find me. So, yeah. Yeah. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So, check that out. And also make sure you're following the podcast, All Murky's Pod, and All Murky's Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that, especially during this holiday season. It helps us so much. 
And also, if you could check out the uh, Patreon, we really appreciate that. And we have watch alongs and other perks. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our merch store, which has some uh, holiday themed designs that are really fun. Uh, so make sure to take a look at that. And thanks again, Brie. Really appreciate it. And we will talk later. Bye, <laughs> Bye everybody. Everyone.